Welcome to The Link. I'm Brandon Johnson with Voight Johnson Real Estate and today I have the pleasure to be joined by Randy Schmitz of Rolling Ridge Wedding and Event Center out of St. Joseph. Welcome Randy, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, kind of got Devin and the band back together. It's been almost a month since we've done this so it's fun to get back in the room and we're adjusting to change of seasons here. It went yeah, from quickly. 80 degrees <laughs> down to below 40 in the last two mornings. So. Um, Randy, you got a real interesting story and a lot going on this year, especially with your business. I mean, we're all adapting, but mm-hmm. um, kind of want to get in and tell the story of your event center and spend a lot of time there in the past few summers, Wednesday nights, yeah. the wife and I, and okay. enjoy it. But um, tell us a little bit about you or what you did, where are you from originally, kind of what makes you tick, your interests. All right. Well, I've been around uh, the St. Cloud area pretty much my whole life. I grew up in Sauk Rapids, born and raised there, and yep. uh, left for a couple of years for school. And then came, Where'd you go to school? Back. Uh, Central Lakes College in okay. Brainerd. Yep. So did a couple of years there and then finished up at St. Cloud State and uh, just had roots in the area and always liked the local community. So, yep. you know, stuck it out here because I uh, pretty, you know, started my first business while I was in college, so what kind, what of, kind of business did you start? It was a landscape company, so okay. uh, I started Scenic Specialties Landscape Company out of my college. Right in college, tour. yeah, yeah. Wow. But I had a pretty good opportunity, so I had a tremendous mentor. Um, his name was Bob Thompson. Okay. Uh, he used to um, him and his wife own Thompson Greenhouse Garden Center out in sure. you know, uh, rural St. Joe. Yeah. So I started working there in. Uh, in high school, I couldn't even drive. My mom used to have to make the trek way out there to drop me off to do, you know, my four-hour stint or whatever it was. Yeah. So, uh, my dad was a, a, a businessman, and his his philosophy was get a get a job related to what you think you want to do before you spend the money on going to school. Yeah. And of course, you know, rebellious son. I didn't really <laughs> want to do that, but. <laughs> I eventually caved and I did it. I'm glad I did it, but um, it was a really good opportunity there. And so um, that's where Scenic Specialties was its first location. Did you always know you were going to be a business owner or a merchant type? Kind of. Yeah. um, Growing up again, like I said, in that business background, that was the dinner table conversation almost every night. Sure. So um, I knew that if I could, that's what I wanted to do. Um, it happened a lot earlier than I thought it was going to happen. You know, yep. I was expecting to, you know, you know, get some more field experience working for other places, but the opportunity presented itself. And that's, you know, one thing that I've learned in my life, like you, you got to be ready for when the time comes and you never know when it's going to come and you got to, you know, yep. seize, seize the moment and do yep. it. So, so you uh, started scenic landscaping mm-hmm. yeah, in that, Brainerd and yep. then you brought that. Yeah. So when I started it, it was, um, you know. Uh, started the original marketing, you know, the old interweb didn't really exist <laughs> yep. back then. Yep. So it consisted of, you know, yellow pages, I think, and, yep. you know, uh, you know, good old fashioned stuff. So uh, started marketing it, meeting with clients, designing, selling. So then when I was able to move back here, uh, then I could, you know, just start digging holes and, and it was just you at first I'm assuming or did you have a couple one employees? of my college buddies joined me the first summer which was awesome okay so uh, he was more of the you know hands-on with me so yep. back then when we started you know you'd do everything you can to survive yep. what time frame are we talking mid 90s late 90s we have been late 90s yeah so 96 97 maybe sure somewhere around that range sure so. And so then that just grew or evolved into, I'm assuming, just started out, you know, retaining walls, patios, and then pretty soon you're doing all shrub, everything, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it grew. Designing is my passion. So like okay. we can really talk about my background, designing, creating, reinventing. That's what I'm good at. That's yep. my stronghold. So in the landscape field, you have the opportunity to do it outside, but, you know, it's usually a direct reflection of the architecture or what's inside the house. Yep. So... You know, as time grew on, as that business developed, it wasn't uncommon for us to get involved with like home construction type things sure. as well. I actually had my builder's license for a while because we started doing a lot of decks and like moving patio doors and sure. and things like that. So, so it's the natural progression. Hey, we can do this, this, and just kind of mm-hmm. evolve. Yeah, kind of turn it into a, a one-stop shop. 
So at about that four or five year mark, I mean, business grew a lot the first few years. Yep. You know, it's easier to do when, you know, low overhead, that kind of yep. thing. We actually started a specialty retail store. It was called The Pond to Shop. And that was located right within the garden center that our landscape company was at. So we had a professional design build company and a retail company. And then at that five year mark, we were kind of busting at the seams. The garden center was doing really well. And then that's when we sought out our second home, which is where we're still at today. So you acquired the site there uh -huh. in St. Joe, uh -huh. yeah. um, build that to, you said a few years ago. So you ran it up until 2016, 17? 17, I think it was, yeah. And, and yeah. then how many people did you have employed or how big were you at that point? It was seasonal, so it varied. I mean, yeah. we would have 30, 40 people at the peak of season because yep. once we moved to that location, then we developed and we started a garden center part. So we expanded off of the retail yep. part that we already were involved with. Yep. So it sort of became a monster that grew out of control pretty quickly. Like it yep. just did its thing and we just, it was a lot to keep up with. Sure. So, uh, you know, we bought, it was 14 acres. We were still in the township. We had to annex it. It had been in the family for well over a hundred years. Yeah. So uh, the location's great. Yeah. Right? We love being there. Um, St. Joseph's a great community, um, yep. great, great exposure. But the minute you drive down our driveway and turn the corner past the historic farm, you feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So yeah. a little piece of paradise we have there. Yeah. So tell me how that transition happened from, was it you had the vision to say, hey, I want to expand and do the event center. And so you sold off the business or did you have someone approach you? Walk me through how that evolved yeah. into that transition. So you get asked that a lot and I'm like, you know, how did it really start? There's <laughs> lots of things. So being, like I mentioned earlier, being a creative mind, uh, I have a very difficult time with kind of the exception of coming here. These offices are laid out really great. I'm always redesigning things. Sure. So how could this be better? How could the traffic pattern be better, etc. So when we set out and bought that farm property, my original goal always, no matter what we did, was to restore the barn. Yeah. Um, and that started like when I was really little. I used to watch this old house with yeah. my dad, you know, yeah. that really dates me, but whatever, you know, Bob Vila. Yeah. It was, uh, it was great. So we, they had um, restored an old barn and turned it into a house. And I just thought that was the coolest yeah. thing. So I was always intrigued by barns for whatever reason. Yeah. And, you know, of course, if you've been out to Rolling Ridge, we have an amazing barn yeah, out it's there. It's phenomenal. Um, so I wanted to do something cool with it, but I didn't know what. So, you know, just over time a plan sort of came together so the original concept was we were going to have what we called a garden village okay so since we had the the garden center the landscape company we were going to sort of be the anchor to that property so we thought and then we'd take these other unique buildings where you could show off ideas type, yeah as a like a yeah show off showroom. ideas or integrate other companies that gotcha. were a part of the process so yep. uh, a pool company perhaps yep. or a lighting company and Yep. You know, that was the original vision, but, you know, we all know what happened to the, the housing market at sure. a given time there and the overall economy. And yeah, so that sort of that so that got put on hold. It yep. did. It really did. And then, you know, over the years, I've been involved with community events, event planning, coordination, that sort of thing. So that's kind of really where the event side sort of started in my mind was the local need for having a unique place to host yep. events. Um, yep. And probably also about the same time where a lot of my friends were getting married and you go to the wedding and everyone was wash, rinse, repeat the yeah. same. The, the traditional golf course, clubhouse mm -hmm. setting and nothing, right? Yeah. But, so then, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, for everybody, they have their own style, their own reason, yeah. whether it's budget or location, yeah. you know, uh, it's, but you yeah. saw an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, saw another opportunity. Yep. So why not go for it, right? Yep. <laughs> so then you say, okay, I'm going to make a clean break from scenic landscaping, or no? It was uh, hey, maybe bold? this might happen eventually, kind of okay. thing. You know, let's do this. So the original concept involved restoring the barn where it was at, yep. and then keeping our garden center, but transitioning it to a little bit more of a boutique style garden center yep. to scale back, like because it was it was big. It was just a lot of moving parts, and that wasn't my favorite part of yeah. the business by any means. So, 
it, uh, that was the original plan, but then as we went through the whole planning, designing process and knowing what you all need to do for a public occupancy business, yep. there were a lot of hoops to jump through, a lot of um, structurally re-engineering, things like that. Anyway, long story short, we ended up picking up the holding barn and moving it to a new spot so we could meet all the codes and it turned into a much bigger project than I was expecting, hence our original transition out of the garden center part. Because it didn't make sense to have these two businesses that would sort of compete with the space at any given time. Yeah. We knew if we really wanted to do it well, we wanted it to be exclusive for that one event at a time. Yep. You know, we didn't want somebody coming in to get petunias. Well, someone's saying I do, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and that makes sense now because just placing myself back in your barn, it's you see the shell of it and it's mm -hmm. an old-fashioned barn. But when you're inside, you feel like you're in a contemporary 2000 but i mean it's mm -hmm. architecturally re i mean it's not old structurally by any no, means no and we've got different buildings and they all have their own kind of unique design or style yeah. but the original historic barn it's close to 130 years old and, it, and, and you maintain that prominence or that mm -hmm. Look, which is which wasn't easy to do. Yeah. And if I had a dollar for everybody that was trying to talk me out of doing what I did, yeah. I have it paid for. <laughs> 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 you know? um, but we we just went for it because the this how it was built it tells a story. You know, you, you, there's some fine craftsmen out there these days. But well, you didn't you cut know. corners. No. That's obvious. <laughs> That's obvious how well it was done. Yeah. So we don't regret that one bit but you know you talk about that transition we transitioned out of the garden center but now having the full-blown landscape business and the wedding and event center i knew it was more than i wanted to do longer term and yep. so we just started seeking out other opportunities and um, had a great opportunity to make the next step of that transition so because it, your branding was i mean the scenic landscaping name is mm -hmm. was worth something right oh yeah it uh, was a great business uh, we had great clients uh, strong design team and you know one of my happiest parts about the transition the person who end up um, that's the owner now used to be one of our team members and they were able to maintain sure. a lot of the same employees and just kind of take it to that next step you sure. know there's always somebody else that can do you know something better than you it's just a matter of when you're ready for that to happen yeah. or you know but Somebody that knows that part do that so you can focus on you yep. know, the other part that you so either want to do or have to do. You when know? you first started out with the event center, how was just getting your name out there? Because you're a brand new entity, right? Doing something that's, you know, there's a few similar yeah. places. But how do you get the name recognition or, hey, here, we're another option for events, weddings. How did you kind of get you that? You know, we were really fortunate. So... Uh, our project was intriguing, you know, so we were able to get some local media attention yep. on it. So yep. that was helpful. But then what we also did is we used our transition out of our garden center. So when the peak season of a garden center, the spring, early summer months, we were able to market to all of our clients, you know, explaining and had some um, renderings of what was going to be happening with the space. Yep. And so we actually built out our bridal suite prior to the garden center opening. And so then we sort of used that as our showroom to showcase it. And, um, yeah. Cause you have separate other structures or buildings. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the older, older style buildings that you've converted into. Um, I don't know what the right word is, not guest quarters, but mm -hmm. staging areas, brides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, areas. so we have it's really neat. The bridal suite, the, the historic house is still used for our offices. So the yep. landscape business is still there. Yep. And so we, uh, you know, Co share, or whatever you want to call the office space. Yeah. Um, but the whole like garden center part, like where the store used to be, the pond shop, that sort of thing is now bathrooms, the lone tree lounge, bridal suite, kitchen. Yeah. So it's a little. And it little goes different. without saying the landscaping there. I mean, everything is to the nines. It yeah. is amazing. And it's that too. I mean, changing it all the time <laughs> yeah. and adding to it, whatever. But that's what, that's what keeps me interest, interested oh. or engaged with it. And so. I had mentioned. My wife and I, we've gone there last summer quite a few times. You know, you have the music, you refer to them as Wednesday. Wood-fired Wednesdays. Wood, Wood-fired Wednesdays where you have a musician, a band. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a relaxing. Mm -hmm. And you must get a few hundred people out there oh, easily. Yeah. yeah. The um, This year, um, you know, we, we capped out at our max occupancy, you know, requirements a couple times. Yeah. Whereas in years past, I mean, it was... 
full. Yeah, lot, I mean, we go there and there you'd be struggling to park even yeah. to be that mm -hmm. full. Um, and now you don't. Does Shortstop cater that, or who do you? Byron? Yeah, so I we have a nice, a, a really unique partnership with Custom Catering by Shortstop. Yep. So yeah, Byron. Everybody knows Byron. Who has the <laughs> coolest Jeep in town, by the way? I gotta <laughs> right. put that out there if you don't. Know <laughs> it's hard to miss. So are yeah. you one of the Jeeps parked out there too? Up yeah, front? well, yeah. we have Christine, we have a few Jeeps in the. Okay, all right. Boy I had Johnson to park next to the Jeep parking yeah. with my Jeep to it. Yeah, so we're Jeep kind thing, of a you know? uh, we're a we're a Jeep brokerage here. So <laughs> fit right, right in. I'm sorry I had to mention that. <laughs> so yeah, but he part you partner with. Yeah, Short stop. so that we started that early on too. As we were developing this business concept, we had met with them and we interviewed, you know, other businesses to partner yep. with, and they were definitely a standout. Not only are they um, amazing food, beverage, service people, they're just really good community just high people. High integrity. Yeah. yeah, and so that was important. So that has worked out and it continues to work out really well. So when I came up with this crazy concept of doing a wood fired Wednesday event, you know, there's a big story behind that, but it they jumped right on board and made it happen. So that's part of what's, again, what, what makes it yeah. good, you know? Pretty cool. Um, and so you do weddings. Mm -hmm. What other types, do you do a lot of events other than weddings? Weddings is like, when we designed it, that was our core business. That we optimized it basically yep. for weddings. And it does work well for other like fundraiser events or corporate type things. Yep. Um, but still weddings is our, our key business. Yep. Um, we do some specialty, you know, higher end corporate things, uh, you know, private out of town groups, that sort of thing. Uh, we have a new space that we just revealed yesterday at our last wood fired event. And it's called our root cellar. And it's our prohibition bar, which is like is it another underground. Small, yeah, it oh, is. Wow. And you needed a code word to get in, and the whole nine yards. So it's is a it fun original space. or did it completely brand new structure? Um, it was within our original restoration that we did in 2015. Wow. It's just that we weren't ready to jump through that next spot. It wasn't. It didn't quite seem fitting. So it was my, you know, COVID release project where it gave sure. me something. Yeah positive to think about yeah. and do you know how so, big or how what's the capacity in there it's the same footprint as the barn oh it's that so, big yeah it's a pretty sizable space all so, underground yes you know there of course is you know some of the mechanical and other functional parts of the barn that are within that space but yeah it's pretty it turned out pretty cool so it was Very fun cool. so we revealed that last night as part of our um, end of season. So we technically ended a week ago, but we weren't ready to give up on summer yet. You know, yep. as you probably know, we weren't able to host the first few this spring because whatever, and um, thought we'd make up for a little last yep. time. So, so let's fast forward now to 2020 and what we lived through or are still living through mm -hmm. in, in the event center world. Mm -hmm. What, just putting ourselves back in February, March, April. What did that look like in your world? Cancellations, just unknown. Walk me through what you, know, you kind of. It was one of the scariest times that I can ever remember in in my lifetime. Yeah. And not so much. I don't know how to describe. It, it was the fear of the unknown. Right. Totally. How like do you plan? It was. You couldn't. You know, everything was literally out of our control. We weren't getting any sort of answers on anything in terms of like you know, what we could, couldn't do, how long it was going to last. And that was really hard trying to help our couples and our clients kind of navigate through that yep. because we didn't know, they didn't know, but they, everybody wanted to know, right. What is the next thing? How can we do this? What are we going to be allowed to do? And so we spent a ton of time researching. And as soon as you like figured out what the next thing potentially could be, you can plan it would little. change, you know, uh, then yeah. it would change again and yep. again. And so adaptability was like the key this year and you know by the time we were actually able to start hosting events this year yeah um you know you get once you get towards like the end of your peak season you feel like this like sort of like a train hit you and you know exhausted we felt that way before we had our first event for the season so uh instead of events sort of slowly draining us over the season, it kind of did the opposite. It's right. like, okay, we got to do another one. Okay, this is how this worked out. And so the first few events that we held were extremely nerve wracking because we wanted to follow the rules. We didn't know 100% what they truly were and trying to interpret it and just yep. guide everybody through it safely. It was yep. 
took out a lot of... So how many, roughly how many weddings did you have this summer or were able to have? I don't know the exact count, but I can tell you at a minimum, we've done one every weekend since the beginning of June. Okay. So literally like that first week when things opened you up said again. capacity is 250 now? Yeah, so that's the max capacity yep. that... Which is uh, still yep, it's, a good size it is, wedding. It is. Uh, and, you know, our average usually ends up being like in a normal year around that 200 yep. mark. So yep. we're finding that most of our couples, you know... Their guest counts are less than what they probably were originally anticipating, but the people that really want to be there are there and they're just, they're happy, you know, they're in love, they want to get married, they want to take that next step and, you know, they're just happy. Well, I suppose everyone's guest lists are going to have the people, especially maybe traveling across, everyone's guest list just out of attrition is going to be smaller yeah. Yeah. because it, of the circumstances too. Different states that have restrictions versus ours or well, yeah, countries. Be, because <laughs> they have to plan travel arrangements yeah. and how do you, you know, just planning's uh-huh. out the window. So This day and age with technology though, it's pretty sweet. I mean, you think back to the old school, put it in the mail and wait for a reply. I mean, yep. you can update people pretty quickly. Yep. So that worked to our advantage too. So what's, um, are there a lot of people weddings that are pro? I mean, what's the future next 12 months? Or is it even more compounded people that postpone their event for next spring? I mean, what's kind of on the consumer's mind here now for events? Is it just everyone wants to reschedule or? No, thankfully. There, I'd say the greater majority of our couples are wanting to move forward. Okay. So like, it, like the first the couples that we did in June, I mean, we had an action plan in place to pull it off as originally planned yep. and then a backup plan to that so they were able to sort of pre-plan and if things changed enough that they could move forward they wanted to move forward we made it happen so when that that, that the change in the executive order took place it was like a light switch of like oh my gosh now what you know total reverse traction to what we were doing yep. before that uh, but again it was all good stuff that was it was good yeah. Um, so we're seeing, I mean, 2021 will be extremely busy for almost anybody in the event industry, given the fact that if we're be open, you know, well, and you've proven that you so, can function in a safe manner absolutely. to a large degree. Correct? Absolutely. And people that don't want to be around people may not come or they'll distance yeah. themselves some more. And, you know, you've been to our facility. We've got endless opportunities for social distancing and you know placement for tables and remote spots and that's the advantage of us being able to just like have one event they can design it however they see fit to make that happen i think that's a huge advantage too that you can offer i mean just the the space and how spread out you are is Mm -hmm. a huge draw for anyone that has concerns yeah and so we've had to modify the service style and how we yeah. serve food and the extra precautions and the cleaning, sanitation. You know, it's pretty, you know, anybody that owns a public sort of business gets it. That's yep. what we, you got to do. So, yep. so what's, um, you'd mentioned the underground mm-hmm. um, facility. What's kind of next? I can just sense that you're always thinking about the next thing or what to do next. Mm-hmm. Is there any other um, expansions or kind of... Anything in the works? Oh, man, yeah. That, that could be a whole <laughs> other two-hour conversation. Yeah. You know? but, uh, yeah, I have lots of ideas. Uh, some you know, Lots that I'm you know, not ready to, to discuss publicly. <laughs> you know, I, but, I tried, I tried. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no. We, uh, yeah, always, there will always be something. You know, we, uh, it's one of our things. We're always looking to, to stay ahead of the trend. Yeah. Uh, try something new you know if something isn't working out quite right what can be done to improve it and make yeah. it better so. offer a, a a unique experience more value to the customer right always just seeking what can i do to make the mm-hmm. um, guest experience better right yeah absolutely and anybody that knows me and my personality i'm all in so i just I, whatever i'm gonna make it the best that's that's what I do and so when we do the surveys or get any feedback I take that all into consideration take it to heart sometimes too much yeah it's a difficult thing too because you want to make everybody happy you know yeah but what what was there any sort of thing feedback that oh we should have done this differently or um not a lot 
I'm, yeah. I really pride myself into that in terms of all of the extra planning that we did before we put the shovel on the ground. Yeah. You know, realistically, that project should have been done and completed a year earlier than it was, but we put the brakes on it to take an extra winter, an extra season yeah. to really think it through because the final concept is very different from how it started. And that change in design or concept really improved the flow, you know, to yeah. be able to use the space year round, to yeah. privatize everything. It, it's working out well. Well, I can tell you, if you haven't been there once you're on site, it's the planning is, is very evident as far as just the, the flow, the functionality, the experience when you're there just being whether it's in the bar area and how accommodating that is to the barn to all of the um, outside facilities that it's really second to none so i it you did it right thank you you did it right um i gotta come out and see this underground i'm just envisioning the coolest poker party <laughs> under there that you can imagine right yeah it's, it's pretty fun <laughs> yeah um so what other, do you, you mentioned you do like do you do corporate events too? We do, but it's a, it's such a small uh, proportion of the business that we do. Yep. You know, a lot of the corporate stuff changed significantly. You know, um, you know the last economic change or whatever, if you if yep. you will, um, and you know. A lot of what exists is either too large for our facility, yeah, or our facility is too big for the style of something that they're looking to do. So yep. again, we focus again mostly on the wedding or more of like the memorable one-time lifetime event yep. sort of thing. So probably like one of my favorites, almost exactly a year ago, I had the opportunity to host a joint anniversary party for my parents and then my godfather or uncle. And so it was really fun because it was all of my family as well and all of their friends that we grew up with over the years and to have everybody back again and to be able to host that it was just it was a really cool that had to be pretty special not only for the personal your family mm -hmm. anniversary but a little bit of hey the fruits of my labor are mm -hmm. seen it in your own yeah fruits of your work pay off in a personal yep, and see their photos sitting on their shelves with our barn or our gardens yeah. as their backdrop but that, that too, that's probably been one of the biggest rewards of getting into this business is the community aspect or um, knowing that we were playing that important role. Because obviously a wedding is a pretty big life-changing, for sure. hopefully once in a lifetime opportunity yep. for most. And to get the feedback or to hear not only like how the facility worked for them, but just how proud they were to be in our space or how much it helped them kind of make that day even more memorable for them that's you know it's hard to put a, a price tag or a value to that well it's got to be very rewarding too right it is that it you're is, contributing so. to mm -hmm. uh, a moment in time that hopefully they'll never forget and flee it's the plan yep um Let's talk marketing wise. Mm -hmm. You're pretty well. I, a lot of social media or some, I see oh, some yeah. stuff out there. Tell mm -hmm. me what your strategy or what you try to do to encapsulate social media into your business. You know, every wedding that we do becomes its own marketing piece. So yeah. every wedding has their own style, their own group, or their own pod of different people. Yep. And so that in itself somewhat self markets itself, you know, whether it's Instagram or. Um, even Facebook, yep. you know, they'll usually put a short you know, photo album out there and the ring of vendors that are involved usually are, you know, it's a community type thing. We all reach out to one another and yep. tag and share and, you know, showcase everybody's work Yep. on each one. You know, if you want to look at it as like a project, yep. uh, that, that is huge. And then of course the wood fired Wednesday, that's our, you know, our kind of our community event to see people, to socialize, but again, it's another thing to just sort of expose people to our environment if they haven't been to a wedding or an event. Yep. There yet. So Yeah, no, I see quite a bit of that out there, so I know you have a pretty good presence, and I'd imagine that's how, you know, word of mouth, just like any business, referrals, but that helps expedite or expand mm -hmm. that. We, as an example, so we draw from a pretty big demographic, you know, not just central Minnesota, it expands out a ways, but it was a few weeks ago we ended up celebrating a wedding that 
was I think maybe somebody from the Elk River area. But okay. We ended up booking two weddings within a short period of time, basically from the same neighborhood. So they all know each other somehow, some way because of their neighborhood environment. So that was kind of fun. Are so, you getting <laughs> people out of the metro oh, coming yeah. out quite a bit? Yeah, definitely. That want yeah. that greater Minnesota? Mm -hmm. Just like their little mini mini vacation, get out of the, you know, the congestion maybe, if you will. And yeah. you know, we've got a lot of, you know, a lot of fun things to do around here, whether it's a brewery tour or yeah. some amazing trails and waterways, that, that kind yeah. of thing. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I, like I said, can't wait to get out there. Um, and see your facilities again because it's yeah. always evolving, correct? Yeah, right, and, yep. Um, if people want to find out more, how can they get in touch or what's your website? Website is rollingridgeevents.com. So there's two E's in a row and it's plural. So rollingridgeevents.com. Uh, and then, of course, our, all of our social links are out there, but Facebook, Instagram, we're out cool. there as well. Cool. Well, Randy, thanks for taking the time and we'll be in touch. Sounds good. Thank you.